Fargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot and Operation Moonbeam. Exactly, Spinner. Do you remember Professor Knockwurst? How could I forget him? He gave us our first rocket ride. We're on our way to his desert missile base right now. He wants us to pilot his newest rocket creation in the space race. Rocket space race? Oh, oh, wow, we! Yes, yeah, Spinner. And what's more, it's a space race to the moon. <laughs> to the moon? Meanwhile, at Professor Knockwurst's missile base, we are most fortunate to have secured such a fine crew as Clutch Cargo and Company. Unless we can get them started on the training test today, we'll never get it all finished before rocket race takeoff time. Our rocket must take off on time. There's Professor Knockworth's base just ahead. Fasten your seatbelts for landing. Clutch, look out! It's a plane coming straight at us! No! That idiot almost hit us. Clutch? No, Spinner, but we made it. There's Professor Knockworth's landing strip. Hey, Clutch! There goes the black jet again! Thank heaven they are here. I am so glad you are here, my friends. I knew I could count on you. Almost didn't make it, Professor. That black jet tried to knock us out of the sky. Oh, dear. Ark, these planes! Too many, they are as sick as fleas on a dog's back. Rockets on space travel, that is the thing now. Oh, but please forgive. Allow me to introduce our rocket team, Clutch Cargo and Spinner, and oh yes, I almost forgot, Paddlefoot. <laughs> and this is my new assistant, Dr. Mary Hogenweiler. I'm very pleased to meet you all. And so are we, Doctor. Please call me Mary. Mary is a doctor of astrospatio-temporal impermanent rocket relationships. I was most lucky to secure her services. Tell us about the moon race, Professor. Your wires sounded urgent. The motor scooters are waiting to take us to the test station. I shall explain as we go. There are two rocket missile teams competing to get to the moon first. The team which wins this race will get the contract to build the first rocket missile bus for moon commuters. We'll do our best to win, Professor. Is that the rocket we'll be going in, Miss Mary? Yes, Dinner. That's the one you'll be flying in the space race to the moon. Golly, what a whopper! Ah, here we are. This is our test center. Dr. Hogenweiler will be in charge of all the tests. It'll be a pleasure. What are the tests, Dr. Hogenweiler? We're going to put you through all the different things that'll happen to you in your rocket flight, even before you leave the ground. Like the acceleration test in my new supersonic rocket sled. And the anti-gravity room, where you will float around as if you didn't weigh nothing. Golly! I can see that's a lot to be done. Let's get started. There's that plane again! He's coming right at us! Hit the deck, everyone. He's going to hit us! Wow! A black jet. Someone's playing for keeps. Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo, with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot, and Operation Moonbeam. You remember last time, Clutch and company had been asked by Professor Knockwurst to fly his rocket in the moon race. They had arrived at the rocket testing grounds and were about to begin their training when the black jet suddenly dove at them. Hit the deck, everyone. He's going to hit us. That guy's really got it in for us. He's turning. Here he comes again. Come on, everyone. I'd like to get my hands on that character. Everyone okay? He threw something out of the plane. Yes, I've got it. It's a rock with a message on it. It says, if you want to live, cancel your moon trip. Looks like he means it too, Clutch. It'll take more than an anonymous note to stop us now. 
Come on, Dr. Hoganwater. I... I mean, Mary. Let's get started with the tests. First, Clutch and company are fitted with their new space suits. That's all right, Paddlefoot. That's yourself you're mad at. Now, this is the food you will take with you. Try some. Hear that, Paddlefoot? Want to try a moon meal? It's so concentrated that one little pill makes a whole meal. And now to test you out in my new anti-gravity home. You see, Spinner, after our rocket gets away from the pull of the Earth's gravity, we'll float around inside it like this, unless we're strapped to our seats. Space travelers have to get used to this. <laughs> Look at Battlefoot. He's swimming. <laughs> but he's not getting anywhere. And now for Professor Knockworth's supersonic rocket sled. It goes from a standing start to five times the speed of sound and back to a full stop. On a track that's only ten miles long. Wow! Everything's set, Professor. Are you all ready for the blast off, Clutch? We're all set. Okay, let her go! That was quite a ride. Paddlefoot lost his bark ten miles back. It is now time for the rocket to take off for the space race to the moon. The countdown will start in five minutes. So get in it already. Aye, aye, Professor. Goodbye, my brave friends. Goodbye. Goodbye, Doctor. What now? Are you all comfortable? Yes, Professor. Fine. You will stay on the moon for five days. Be sure to blast off for Earth at the exact time. If you are even a few seconds late, you will miss your landing on Earth and fly back into space to orbit in space forever. Oh! You have 30 seconds before blasting off. Comes now the countdown. A bit of Five, four, three, two, one. The first flight to the moon. Will Clutch and Company be successful and reach the moon? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. And Operation Moonbeam. You remember last time, Clutch and company, after agreeing to fly Professor Knockwurst's rocket ship to the moon, completed their tests and boarded the ship. Then came the final countdown. Two, one, blast off! The first flight to the moon. We're off, Spinner. A real good start, too. Look at the television screen in front of you, and you'll see how fast we're climbing away from the Earth. Wow! We'll have to rocket at speeds up to 25,000 miles an hour to get away from the Earth's gravity pull. Boy, I never thought I'd travel that fast. The timer shows that the first stage is almost ready to drop off. Get that, you two, in case anything goes wrong. It'll pull away when the second hand is exactly straight up. Get set now. That dropped clear okay. That's the second stage lighting up. The mighty blast of the second stage drives the rocket higher and faster. The acceleration is going to start building up fast now. It sure is. It's really pushing me down in my seat. And look at Paddlefoot. He's shrinking. He's okay. This will let up in a moment. Soon the sky changes to the inky black of outer space. Time for the second stage to drop off. If that separates okay, we're in the clear. Five seconds to go. Get set. The second stage drops clear, and the third stage rockets light up. Clutch! Look at 
Look over to the right, that light. Do you think maybe it's spacemen? It's spacemen, all right, Spinner. Only they're from Earth, same as we are. That's the rocket ship and the team we're racing to the moon. There's a sign on the side of it. What does it say? It says, much cargo, go home. Oh, yeah? We won't let them win, will we, Clutch? We'll do our best, Spinner. They put on a lot more power. Well, their engines are bigger. They're passing us. What's that flashing light on the instrument board, Clutch? That's a warning light when something is in front of us. That other rocket ship is pulled out in front. We're in the rocket slipstream. It's bound to slow us down. Well, can't we go over or under or around them? No chance, Spinner. Our controls are locked in by the radar system from Earth. There's no way for us to control our ship until we get almost to the moon. Earth calling clutch cargo in moonshot. Calling clutch cargo in moonshot. Attention, please. Unidentified object in your path. You now have full control of your rocket ship. Over and out. Hooray! We've got control. Now we'll win. If we're lucky at the gain speed, we can pass them and maybe stay out in front. Here goes with our final power boost. With a final surge of mighty power, Moonshot shoots above and out in front. We made it, Clutch. We passed them. We sure did, Spinner. We can relax a little now. Only two hours more to the moon. <coughs> Meteor shower. <coughs> Hang on. If we get a direct hit, we're goners. What do we do, Clutch? What do we do? Close to the moon, and yet so far. Will they make it? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo, with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot, and Operation Moonbeam. You remember last time, Clutch and company, in their race for the moon, had flown over 200,000 miles into space. The rocket ship that was racing them had passed them, but with their last burst of speed, Clutch got out in front. Suddenly, meteor shower! If we get a direct hit, we're goners! What do we do, Clutch? What do we do? Clutch, we've been hit! Put on your space helmet, we're gonna need oxygen. You'll have to take over the control, Spinner. We've been hit, all right. I'm going to try and patch it. I'll fly it, Clutch. Sure glad we had that training. Clutch unstraps his seatbelt, and with a push, floats up to the nose of the spaceship cabin. Can you find the hole, Clutch? Not yet. If I can't locate it soon, we're going to be in trouble. Clutch searches frantically for the place where the damage is. How are you doing, Clutch? Not sure. Wait a minute. Got it. Fairly small hole, thank goodness. I'm going to screw in a metal patch. Sure hope it'll plug the hole. So do I. Clutch, look at the screen. We're getting close to the moon. That's it, Spinner. Let me take the controls. We have to land tail first. The spaceship lands on the airless, silent, dead world of the moon. Touchdown. We're on the moon. Make sure your space bubble is okay. I'll check Paddlefoot's. Okay, Clutch. Now, shall I push the button for the door? Go ahead. Holy Clutch, look at that. No grass or trees or anything. And what's that big ball in the sky? That's where we've come from, Spinner. It's our own Earth. Gosh. Come on, Paddlefoot, let's get out. Be careful, Spinner. It'll be hard to walk with no weight to hold you down. Look at me cover the ground. I feel like I'm having a dream. Here's our claim flag. First human beings on the moon. That's us, Clutch. No, I wouldn't say that. It, it, it's a moon man. No, it's... Swampy, you old dickens. How come you're here? Were you in that other big rocket ship? Jump in moon craters? No. I heard you was on your way here, so I thought I'd come too. Built my own rocket out of parts of a sunken ship. I got a two-stage rocket ship. One stage to get up here on, and one to go home on. Why not go home with us? We've got more than enough room. Maybe I will. It's mighty lonely in outer space. Look! It's the rocket we raced. We beat them here. Now we'll find out who it is. Oh, a 
of people. It's Carney Vale, the guy who tried to get us at the county fair. Welcome to the moon, Clutch Cargo. What brings you here, Vale? I thought I might find a moon man or a woman to take back with me as a big attraction for my county fair. That's a peculiar looking man right there. Maybe I can persuade him to go back with me. Can you speak English? You're ding busted right. I'm as human as anybody else. Well, don't get mad, friend. We've got work to do, Vale. We'd better get going. Come on, fellas. Sure, go ahead. I've got work to do, too. I'm going to see you'll never get back to Earth again. <laughs> Uh-oh, Carney failed. Will he succeed with his scheme? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot and Operation Moonbeam. Last time, Clutch and company landed on the moon and were surprised to find Swampy, their old friend there. A greater surprise came when Carney Vale showed up from the other rocket ship as they left to explore the moon. Come on, fellas. Sure. I'm going to see you'll never get back to Earth again. <laughs> For the five days they stay on the moon, Clutch and company and Swampy have much to do. Well, that's about it, everybody. We'd better think about getting back. I've been thinking about that fella, Carney Vale. Haven't seen him since that first day. You spoke too soon, Mr. Swampy. Look, here he comes now. And he's got someone with him. Well, I'll be... <laughs> I told you I'd find what I came after, a moon girl. I'm taking her back to Earth. She'll be a smash in my carnival sideshow. Don't be a fool, Connie. She can't live on Earth. She's a space girl. This evil man won't let me go. Clutch, she speaks English. We speak all languages. But please help me. Leave her alone, Carney. You're not taking her back. Don't try to stop me, Cargo. Look out. He has a paralyzing ray gun he found here. One step closer and I'll let you have it. Put that down, Carney. Are you mad? I warned you. What? I can't move. Run away, rocket ship. I can't either. He's paralyzed us with that ray gun. <laughs> My ship's out of fuel, and I'm going to take yours. <laughs> Clutch, Spinner, and Swampy paralyzed from the ray gun. But look, not Paddlefoot. So long, you poor helpless people. Help! Good for Paddlefoot. He tripped him. The ray gun drops and goes off. And Carney gets it. Can you help us, little lady? Yes. The ray gun is also a deparalyzer gun. I'll release you. This won't hurt. <laughs> Yahoo! I can move again. Many thanks, young lady. And a great big thanks to Paddlefoot. We haven't much time. We have to start back in 17 minutes. You the only person living on the moon? We had a meteor shower that destroyed most of the population. Those who survived went to Venus. I was in hiding and got left. The rest of my people will return soon. My name is Moonbeam. Gee, we sure hate to leave you here. It is the only way. I couldn't live on Earth. Maybe someday we shall meet again. With all my heart, I hope so. What about Carney Vale, Clutch? We'll deparalyze him and take him back with us. He won't be hard to manage. Ten seconds before blast off. Everybody set? Okay, Clutch. I'm set. Oh, oh. And I hook my rocket on behind. Oh, oh, oh. Curses. Four, three, two, one, blast off. Clutch Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot and Operation Moonbeam. Be sure to
please tune in for the next exciting adventure.